Hi, welcome back to SelfCAD. This is part five of our 3D Modeling 101 series, where we discuss key concepts for people who are completely new to 3D modeling. Getting started with 3D design, but can't grasp how CAD software works, or experienced with 2D design and want to learn 3D modeling. Before watching this, please make sure you've seen parts one through four, where we discuss the concepts behind 3D models, how to transform shapes, and how to orient yourself in 3D space, and the basics of topology. In this one, we'll delve deeper into all of the different options available in SelfCAD for creating 3D objects. Let's get started. Why do we need so many object creation tools? If you're coming from 2D software, you might wonder why 3D software needs so many tools for creating objects, since 2D apps focus mostly on drawings. You might ask a similar question if you're a beginner who just watched the previous video, where we explained the very basics of creating. The simple answer is all 3D objects are different. A cube, for example, is what we call a planar object. A sphere is a rotating object, and a cylinder is both at the same time. Let me explain each type of object I've just mentioned. What is a plane? To remind you, a plane is a flat surface on which we work in a 3D space, and each of them has two axes. For example, the default floor grid is an XZ plane. The right left are XY planes, while the front and back are YZ planes. The workspace is limited to these predefined planes that align with the 3D Cartesian coordinate system but you can create an infinite number of planes in the workspace. The drawing tools, for example, allow you to rotate and offset predefined planes and add completely new planes on which to draw. They are an integral part of drawing in 3D and we refer to them as drawing planes. What is a planar object? In the simplest terms, planar objects are 2D shapes with added thickness. A cube, for example, is a 2D rectangle with added thickness. And because it's symmetrical, you get the same outcome on all sides. However, non-symmetrical shapes may depend on how you create them. For example, if you look at this shape from top to bottom, you will see it's a 2D drawing with added thickness because it's symmetrical in this direction. However, looking at it from the other sides, you will see that it cannot be flattened into a 2D drawing without losing details. And some shapes are non-symmetrical from all directions. Hence, you cannot create them by the drawing, filling, and adding thickness method that we demonstrated in part two. This means that a planar object must also be symmetrical from at least one direction, but the inverse is not true. You can have symmetrical objects that are not planar, such as a sphere. Spherical objects. Objects such as a sphere are symmetrical, not planar, because there's no way to create them from a 2D surface by adding thickness to it. And objects like a torus are even more complex because of the hole inside them. When you look at these primitives and their customization options, you might get the impression that they were created by rotation. And you would be right. So let's have a look at how to create such shapes from scratch and how to use the same methods to create more complex shapes. Making a sphere from scratch. We'll start by selecting a loop of edges with our advanced selection option, which allows us to select a rough outline of the sphere. Loop selection works solely on quads, which is why we need to select the top and bottom edges manually. But with that, we have selected a perfect arc that we can use to create a sphere. First, we create a copy of the loop to create a profile. And now we can use the revolve tool. Now we just have to draw the edge around, which will revolve the profile and we're done. We got a nice sphere with a perfect structure made of mostly quads, except for triangles on top and bottom. Making a torus from scratch. Now we'll use the same tool to create a torus. 
We'll start by loop selecting an entire circle and then use the Revolve tool, but this time without specifying or drawing the edge around which to revolve the profile. Instead, we'll use the gizmos to customize the size and shape of the torus, understanding the Revolve tool. We can point out two prerequisites for the Revolve tool based on what we just showed you. The first of them is a profile that we'll use to create the object, and the second is the edge around which we'll rotate the profile. SelfCAD will automatically create a rotation edge when you open the tool but you can always customize it by using the gizmos, as we showed you with the torus example. Of course, that's not the only way to do it. You already know, based on the previous examples, that you can draw a new edge around which to rotate the profile, but you can also select one of the existing edges of any object in the scene and rotate the profile around it. Those options are not just for convenience, however, as they have their designed use cases when working with different types of profiles. Let us go back to our sphere example. When you revolve a circle around its center, meaning without selecting any edge around which to rotate the profile, you might get a good looking shape. But when you look into the object, you will notice it has duplicated faces inside, making the object non-manifold. That's why you should revolve just half of the profile when you want to create a closed shape, similar to how we revolved an arc instead of a circle to create a sphere. This way you will avoid the duplicated faces inside of the object and keep the object manifold. On the other hand, if you want to create a shape with a hole inside, you should use the entire profile and set the rotation edges with the gizmos by drawing the edge or selecting one of the edges within the scene. You can also use open profiles to create hollow shapes by using the gizmos or selecting the rotation edge away from the profile. In such cases, created objects will not have a volume, so you will either have to add thickness to it or close it with fill polygons to make it manifold. Let's see those options in practice once again by creating a cylinder. Creating a cylinder from scratch. We'll start by selecting one side, top, and bottom edges and creating their copy to get a profile. Now if you don't select a rotation edge, the Revolve tool will rotate the profile around its center. But if we move it away with the gizmo or select an edge away from the profile, we will get an open shape. Now we can add thickness to create a hollow object or fill polygon to close the object, flipping the inside and outside. You might have noticed one more option in the Revolve tool, flip normals. We talked about normals in previous episodes, but let's see how they work in this particular tool. To do that, we'll use the same profile we used to create the cylinder. Now we'll close it with an arc on the open side and use the flatten tool to align it with the Cartesian plane. Now we can open the revolve tool and use the gizmos to move the rotation edge. As you can see, when we move the edge to one side, the object looks fine, but when we move it to the other side, it changes color to dark blue, which indicates that the faces have been flipped, in which case you should enable the flip normals to restore correct orientation. There are, of course, ways to fix issues with orientation after finalizing the revolve. You can always check for such issues with backface coloring and fix them with the flip polygons tool. Using rotation versus thickness. To go back to our previous point about planar and spherical objects, we mentioned that some shapes can be considered both, and cylinder is one such shape. In the previous example, we showed you how to create it with revolve tool. Like other spherical shapes, but you can also create a cylinder by drawing a circle, filling it, and adding thickness, because the shape is planar from top to bottom. However, if you look at the face structure on the top and bottom of the cylinder, you'll see it's nowhere near as nice as the geometry created with the Revolve tool. 
You can solve this problem by drawing a cross line across the profile. You can draw more lines if you want, as the software will naturally mark all the intersections. But the main idea is to add a center point that will help the software fill the profile with nice triangular faces. Parts are unique to SelfCAD, and they represent the polygon structure of the original drawing. In other apps, when you fill the profile, you'll get multiple faces, and the entire circle will form a polygon. SelfCAD, however, indexes the faces into parts based on the drawing's structure which in practice allows you to select and edit parts with our dedicated selection tool. Practical use for Revolve tool. We designed the Revolve tool to create shapes that do not resemble any primitives you can find in the 3D shapes section. And it's the easiest way to create any circular objects, so long as they are symmetrical. We used the term symmetrical before when discussing planar geometry. But in the case of the Revolve tool, you can select any edge around which to rotate the tool, even if the end result is not planar. You can also edit the profile any way you want before using Revolve. Just try to avoid creating any intersections, as it will cause the object to be non-manifold. SelfCAD's Shape Generator Another way to create complex objects is by using our Shape Generator tool which, contrary to Revolve, does not require any profiles. Instead, it allows you to customize and layer multiple primitives on top of each other, as well as customize the transitions between the layers, allowing you to visualize objects from the ground up, making it an excellent choice for beginners that find working with sketches and Revolve a little too difficult. How to create smooth transition surfaces. We just showed you how the shape generator creates transitions between layers. But as you can see, the differences between layers and their connections are rather easy to differentiate. To create smooth transitions between layers, you should use our loft tool. What is loft? As said before, loft allows you to create connections and transitions between objects be they profiles or objects. In the case of profiles, you can use Loft as an alternative way to create completely new and unique objects by creating transitions between multiple profiles, whether symmetrical or not, as long as they do not intersect. The only limitation is that Loft can only create a single closed path. It is possible to use it to create hollow objects by adding an inner profile and guiding the loft accordingly, but you're limited to creating just one hole. Connecting objects works the same way, but we need to add two more steps. First, we need to select the objects we want to connect and group them. Then select the regions between which we want to make the connection and hit loft. Loft with rails. Rails are an additional option for the Loft tool, allowing you to customize and reshape the connection between shapes. It's more of an artistic tool, especially helpful when working with organic shapes. You can add rails by drawing profiles between the starting and ending points of the Loft, with each rail connecting with every other profile used for its creation. Multidirectional design. But what if using loft with rails is not enough for your design? Where the connection you want to make is too complex? The answer is the Boolean Intersections tool. Boolean Intersections, or Stitch and Scoop as we call them in SelfCAD, are not limited to working with closed paths like loft, as they work based on the volume of the objects. So you can use them with any watertight meshes. For example, you could sketch a few pieces, convert them to meshes, and use Boolean tools to keep the intersected parts of the objects you want to use for your design, or combine multiple 3D objects into one and use it instead. And that's it for this video. We hope that now you know how to create objects with all of our available tools. 
and understand when and why to use specific methods to create specific shapes. In the following videos, we'll teach you how to deform and modify shapes by editing meshes and how to fix broken objects. Stay tuned.